Yeah, when I when you come in like this, you see. Uh -huh. <laughs> Here we go. You know, I've been pursuing you for this for about three years now. I don't know how many letters I wrote you. Yeah. <laughs> this the operating room is, is is where I found myself most comfortable. And people used to say to me, "Well, what do you do to?" To relax, you know, you have all this tension and all these patients to deal with. I said, go in the operating room. When you get into the operating room, and you know this from your own experience, when you get in the operating room, everything in your mind that has been worrying you disappears. And the reason for it is that you're not concentrating on this patient. And your concentration is so complete. You know, I, they used to have music here. I didn't even hear the music. Even though you have your agonies here, you also get, fortunately, uh, your ecstasies here. You know, it's interesting to be pursuing a guy that was born in 1908 and knowing that he is still fully cognizant and can tell you the whole story of his whole life. And that's, uh, I mean, that's a long time ago. I, I was born of, of parents that gave me a, an exceptional upbringing, particularly in, in so-called Judeo-Christian values. My grandparents and my parents uh, emigrated to this country uh, from Lebanon. My parents were very, very insistent upon education and very also insistent upon discipline. So I had, from my mother's side, the value of compassion, because she was a very compassionate person. And on my father's side, very, very uh, strict discipline. To make his old teacher at Tulane Medical School, Dr. Alton Oxner, a great heart surgeon himself, remembers his old pupil as an even-tempered perfectionist. Today, however, DeBakey has a reputation for a famous temper. He is amused and says, they say I do flare up. Actually, it takes a while, then I boil. Like, let's say we're operating here, and all of a sudden I get my head kind of in, in the light there. Would, <laughs> would, would that bother him at all, or not, not really? <laughs> well, I don't know what's wrong with you and your intelligence if you got your head between the light and the wound. I mean, it just show a complete sign of disrespect and no intelligence and no brains. This is a DeBakey woven Dacron vascular mm -hmm. prosthesis, 22 millimeters. Yeah, Tell us this. About that. Well, <laughs> this began uh, in 1954, 50 years ago. Uh, what happened was. Uh, that we were interested, you know, we were using homographs, uh, fresh homographs. And it soon became apparent that we really needed something that was sort of on the shelf, that was available. So we began doing experimental work <coughs> on some substitute. And I went downtown to a department store to buy some nylon. And the clerk said to me, we're fresh out of nylon, but we've got a new material called Dacron. Now that's the first time I'd heard the word Dacron. And I looked at the material, you know, and felt it, and it, it felt good, and I liked it. And, and again, this comes to some extent from my early experience that my mother taught me about sewing, and I bought a yard of it. And I would uh, take two sheets like this and cut them to the width I wanted, and I felt so the each edge like that on my wife's sewing machine. Uh, when you do that, you got a tube. And then I had one made like this with, with two, uh, two branches. 